Welcome to Kingdom Builders, the channel that's all about helping you to live out of the right side and share your message. The right side is the kingdom of God. When the rapture of the church happens, there will be those who are left behind who had at some point in their past prayed the sinner's prayer. Some teach that everyone who has ever accepted Jesus as their personal savior will go in the rapture. But let's look at Matthew 25, which is the parable of the ten virgins, and see if we can gain some understanding from this parable. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Half of them are ready when the bridegroom comes, and half are not. Does that mean that the five who were not ready, the five who were left behind, have no hope? Let's see if we can answer this and the following questions. 1. What qualifies them as being one of the virgins? 2. What are the lamps? 3. What is the extra oil that the wise virgins took with them, and how does this relate to the Word of God? 4. Why would the wise virgins take extra oil while the foolish ones did not? What does this mean, and why would the wise not share their oil? 5. Why is it that the announcement of the bridegroom's arrival differentiates them? In searching for answers to these questions, let's first consider all that our Heavenly Father has given us in His Word. Let's recognize that Scripture and the interpretation should be consistent throughout the Word and that there must be a perfect match when compared to other passages in the Word of God for an interpretation to be acceptable. Our first question was, what qualifies a person as one of the virgins? To answer this, we will look at the original meaning in Greek of the word virgin. A virgin is described as being a maiden, an unmarried daughter. We see this word used in 1 Corinthians 7.34 where Paul says, There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Paul also says in 2 Corinthians 11.2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We receive another clue to who is a virgin from Revelation 14.4. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they remain virgins. They follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. So we see from these scriptures that these are born-again believers who do not mingle with the affairs nor have their affections set in this world. They follow Jesus. They speak only and agree only with what the Word says. Each virgin has a lamp. What is the lamp? Proverbs 20:27 20, says, The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Your spirit or lamp was created to hold oil. When you were born again into God's kingdom, you became one spirit with the Lord, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 17. You are created in Christ Jesus as a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You were created to fellowship with him and be in complete agreement with what he says. Your lamp or spirit man is able to receive through your ear gates and your eye gates. That means that you receive by hearing and seeing. Romans 10:17 says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Psalm 119:105 says, "Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path." The word lamp is the thing that glistens when it's lit. 
and the word light is the substance that fuels the light. The fuel for the light is oil. In other words, the word of God is the oil that lights the lamp. Consider this, the virgins follow the lamb wherever he goes. In John 10:27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Conversely, those virgins who are left behind may be going through the motions of church attendance and even proclaiming that they are Christians, but they do not follow the lamb wherever he goes, nor do they listen for and obey his voice. What is the extra oil that the wise virgins took with them? How does this relate to the word of God? The wise virgins had carried extra oil in jars with them. Why? Because they wanted to see when the bridegroom came. This oil is the word, but not just scriptures that they had memorized or heard over the years. I believe it is the word of God about the readiness or watchfulness for the return of the bridegroom. Why do I think that? Because the foolish ones became aware of their lack of oil only when the announcement was made that the bridegroom was coming. That's when they attempted to light their lamps. Their lamps wouldn't light. You see, there was no difference in the virgins. They were virgins. These ten virgins symbolize people who have accepted Christ. The virgins all fell asleep. All of us who are saved have had to wait through time for prophecy to unfold, for end time events to be fulfilled, and for the midnight cry. We've all fallen asleep. When they heard the midnight cry, they all woke up. They all tried to light their lamps. This is when the foolish became aware of their shortage of oil. So the oil pertains to the word of God and applies to the time of the end when the bridegroom is announced and it applies to a lack of oil in their receptacle. How do you have extra oil? Matthew 25 3 says the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them the wise ones however took oil in jars along with their lamps what is the extra container that the wise filled I believe it's your soul your soul is a container or a receptacle that consists of your mind your will and your emotions this container is a lot like a computer that you download things into you can download visions by what you let your eyes look at. You can download information by what you read and listen to. You can review that information through meditation and you can deepen the infiltration of negative through your negative meditation. These two containers that hold oil, your spirit and your extra jar, the soul, are amazing. Your spirit is controlled by the Holy Spirit when you are born again. Your soul, however, is your jurisdiction. You get to choose what you put into your soul. Thus we see why Satan battles for your soul. It's your extra oil container. The wise virgins chose to use their souls to be holders of extra oil. They prepared for that extra oil by making room for the word of the bridegroom. You cannot pour oil into a vessel that is full. God can only give extra oil to those who have cleansed their souls in obedience and humbled and emptied their souls from the things that defile it and the things that clutter. God wants us to make room for him. James 1.22 says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. 1 Peter 1.9 says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And 1 Peter 2.11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul. What is the oil? Some say the oil in the lamp is the Holy Spirit. Others say it's our works. These two interpretations are not consistent through the word. But Proverbs 23:23 23, 23 provides us with a key that shows the difference between the wise and the foolish virgins and how to tell the difference. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. This is the person who has prioritized laying down their thoughts to take God's thoughts as uppermost. This person has laid aside the Babylonian system that we've all been raised in to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. 
This individual is watching for the bridegroom's return. But as for the foolish virgins, of them this passage in Revelation 3 is true. Because you say, I am rich and have prospered and grown wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor, blind and naked, without hope and in great need, I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated red hot and refined by fire so that you may become truly rich and white clothes representing righteousness to clothe yourself so that the shame of your nakedness will not be seen and healing salve to put on your eyes so that you may see those whom I dearly and tenderly love I rebuke and discipline showing them their faults and instructing them so be enthusiastic and repent change your inner self your old way of thinking your sinful behavior seek God's will finally why wouldn't or rather why couldn't the wise virgins share their oil why did they advise the foolish ones to go buy oil for themselves because only you can choose to seek first God's kingdom only you can choose to turn off the distractions of this world and put what God has to say first first in your life only you can renew your mind choosing God's Word above what anyone in this world would tell you your parents your spouse your doctor your lawyer a trusted friend only God's Word first the foolish virgins were more concerned about the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the lust for other things their traditions nullified the Word of God in them there was no searching for truth they claimed to understand but called those that were watching for his return those who were speaking truth those who were speaking doctrines of demons they assigned cruel attributes to our Heavenly Father and diminished Jesus' sacrifice on the cross they are not intimate with the Father because they don't know him they depend on what they do instead of relying on listening to his voice for life's direction from the get-go the wise virgins began to store up oil how about you it's not too late will you seek out true intimacy with Jesus will you listen for his voice will you set his word as first place in your life will you watch for his return when this announcement is made the wise virgins have an openness to receive the truth and are watching for the day and hour from which their appointment will be fulfilled until then they are constantly searching the scriptures and are not concerned about traditional teachings about his return they are longing for his appearance and have a burning desire for his return they are constantly digging in to learn more they disconnect from the world they are in love with their father and their greatest desire is to be with God thank you for watching if this video was encouraging or helpful please like share and subscribe we so appreciate you we are here for you we invite you to share with us your thoughts and concerns regarding current events God has called us to dedicate our lives full-time to build you up and encourage you through our speaking writing and creation of these videos we're committed to sharing the good news of his kingdom and his soon return we invite you to partner with us when you partner with us, it's as if you are doing the writing, speaking, and video creating because the Lord credits our harvest to your account as you support our work for Him.